Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I beat again, G doing political commentary for the media speaks. And uh, if you know, if if you are a fan of the news and you don't like the commentary that I do, I need you to do me a favor and I need you to skip ahead five minutes. Okay, the first five minutes are for people that regularly listen to the show. And if you haven't before, please do. Because I am a firm believer in what Michael Savage says. You can only do so much serious news as he says, Democrat bad, libertarian good, Republican in the middle, bombings, murders. You can only do so much of that. So we're going to have a little bit of fun today. See, I found these ridiculous trolls who, by the way, are going to be banned from the site because they have now started attacking fellow listeners of the show. I don't care what people say about me, but they've started going, and they're spamming, so they're going to be barred. Hello, Donna. You're going to be barred, whore, from the site. However, I needed to address something because I actually did do something now that I keep forgetting. It's called misspeaking, to be like a George W. Bush. During one of my shows, and I've got like 482 of them up, so I don't really know which one, I had said something to the effect of don't be down on strippers. I live off of a stripper. I, I live off of strippers. Okay, I'm going to explain what I meant because Donna Trollop does in fact have a point here because I did say that, but I keep forgetting that a lot of people don't listen to the show so they don't always know that I'm speaking usually to my, and I only have like 480 subscribers. I'm not going to lie. I'm not like huge or anything. But I keep talking to those 480 people. I keep forgetting that new people do come in. Do I live off of strippers? Actually, yeah. I work among other places. I DJ raves. I'm in a band. I, I rent properties. I do all kinds of crap. One of the things I do is I DJ in an adult club. That would be a strip club. And um, I wouldn't want to be ambiguous. Um, I went ahead and fell in love with a dancer that once worked there. And uh, still does from time to time, but occasionally he still works there. And uh, it's called moonlighting in the industry. Shh. Um, basically, I make minimum wage. And there are, uh, what I mean, I don't know, 33 bucks a day. However... I run a light board, an Electrolyte CP120, for those that want to question me, which is not easy to run. Um, I have to announce things. Every three minutes, I am in charge of the way the club looks, the way the club sounds, what is said, how much is sold, who is in a room, who's getting out of a room, how much beer was sold, are the lights bright enough, do we have fog, do we have too much fog, because you have too much fog, you set the fog, you set the smoke detectors off, I'm in charge of all of that. The girl on stage, I have to make sure every single girl there is the girl that I think is the most beautiful girl in the world. Doesn't matter if she happens to be one of the four or five girls that I'd like to drag behind a car. I'm not allowed to say that. I have to make them all sound beautiful. And you know what? No one does it better than I do. And I'm not being conceited, but I've been doing it for almost a decade. I've got it. Um, my point being, if you've got, say, 10, 20 dancers... And they're all tipping you 5 to $10. Some of the ones that really like what I do tip 15 or 20 You can see where this turns into some good money. And I am, in fact, living off of strippers. However, I'm doing an ass load of work for them, too. But when I said the joke, I misspoke. And uh, I wanted to clarify that, not because I care what Donna thinks. She's about to be banned from the site, along with all of her little butt pirates. But I wanted to clarify it for other people that may have followed the thread. It was a joke. However, Donna, before I ban you from the site, you wanted my attention. Well, you got it. Christelle, I'm about to use you, you little rotten person. Get over here. And here's some Motley Crue, since I found Donna on a Motley Crue site. Give me money. Please give me money. Yeah, give me money. Do you feel abused? Oh, quit using me. Please quit using me. Do you feel abused? Oh, yeah. 
You wanted my attention, Donna. You got it. And now you're banned from the site. See ya. All right, friends. Thank you, Christelle. Uh, now that we have catered to our childish listeners who are now banned from the site, we will go ahead and get to the actual news. As she inspired me to do the misspeaking show. Remember when George Bush goes, oh, I must have misspoke. Well, I kind of misspoke when I said I lived off of strippers. Okay, we're going to do the entire first half of the show about people that have misspoken. And the, the big obvious huge misspeaking here is from France. Uh, oh my God, this is terrible. Endtimeheadlines.org. Thousands of dead fish found on a beach in France. I'm going to show you where the misspeak comes in. About 10,000 dead fish were found last Friday stranded on a beach in the neutral reserve of Moe's et Laurent saint Fruit. Did I pronounce that right? Probably not. For now, the reasons for this mysterious massacre remains unknown. Remains unknown? Any of us that have followed Fukushima, that would be the quadruple meltdown, melt out, and melt through. If you don't know what a melt out is, it's when the core blows into the uh, environment. The actual uh, radioactive core, it happened. Um, never mind the quadruple meltdown, melt out, and melt through that's going on in Japan. Never mind all of the scientists, such as... Uh, Chris Busby, Helen Coldicott, Lauren Murray, Arnie Gunderson, um, no, Michio Choco, never mind these physicists and scientists and nuclear great minds of our time saying that it would take a number of years for the jet stream, which is the, the atmosphere of the planet, for lack of better words, to blow the poisons from Fukushima into France. Because keep in mind, it's got to go damn near all, all the way to Europe. It takes a while. The time frame that was given by people who are far smarter than me was 2015. And yet, we don't know what caused it. That is a bigger misspeak than saying you live off of strippers and making yourself sound like a misogynistic bastard. Why? Because at least my misspeaking does not endanger millions of lives. Why is this happening? They know why it's happening. But General Electric is TEPCO. Te uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company is General Electric. Look it up if you doubt me. There's a lot of money tied up in not letting the world know exactly how vile these corporations, uh, not all corporations, I'm not like that, but this corporation is. Nature Reserve managers have never seen it. I bet they hadn't, because they've never seen a quadruple meltdown before. It is they who discovered Friday thousands of dead fish, and even today they are struggling to estimate the extent of the carnage. 10,000 certainly more fish, all washed up on the beach. It says the beach where they are stranded is nearly five kilometers long. It has a dead fish every 10 meters in places, but it is up to 20 or 30 fish. We're found every 10 meters, explains Pierre Rousseau, a babysitting technician, Wetland Nature Reserve, Mose Laron. Didn't I just butcher the French language? <laughs> Terrible. Um, guys, I'm trying to be kind of joking here because all the news tonight actually isn't all that good, but let's face it. We know what's causing these things. We, we know what the tuna is. I would like, uh, somebody call Fairwinds, Arnie Gunderson. He's kind of arrogant, but he's always right. Um, have I had correspondence with him before? Yeah. Do I respect him? Yes. Do I like him? Not really. But ask Arnie Gunderson, has anybody tested these fish? Because I would like to see Arnie test it. Because on a professional level, I really respect the man. And I think he would give you some really good numbers regarding the alpha, beta, and gamma radiation levels that I'm willing to guarantee you are in these fish that we don't know what caused it. And you can test um, certain radionuclides to tell how whether or not a uh, radio, radioactive element has come from a nuclear power plant because there are hundreds if not thousands of elements released. And let's say that these stickers here from stickerjunkie.com 
This one lasts for millions of years. And this one here lasts for millions of years. But this one only lasts for about a week. If you find this washed up somewhere, then you can pretty well rest assured that when that one that was around a week ago had died and left its imprint in the DNA of the fish, then you know it had to have come from Fukushima because it's the only one currently melting down. They, they could test this. And what I'm saying is, I've, I've put it in layman, layman's terms for you, but simply put, they can test where it's come from and how, it's, how it arrived there based on the way that it broke down, which deals with its half-life. All right, friends, news.yahoo.com, another huge misspeak. How many leaders in the African nation of Zimbabwe said that, uh, that you know they had the banking under control? The world need not panic. <laughs> I can't even believe I'm going to read this because it's, uh, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was something that you would find at the onion. As currency reserve dies, Zimbabweans will get $5 for 175 quadrillion local dollars. No, I, I thought it was a joke. I didn't really think in it. <laughs> I can't even talk. Christelle, I'm dying of thirst, my dear. I, I never, ever thought that it could be real. Uh, McDonald Duzutwi wrote this for Yahoo News. I've looked it up. I looked it up like three or four sources. It's not a joke. This is what very bad monetary policy will do to a nation, okay? As currency dies, Zimbabweans will get $5 for every 175 quadrillion local Zimbabwean dollars. <laughs> oh, talk about a misspeak. We got this under control. Perhaps you don't. Zimbabweans, and again, I'm making fun of their leaders, not their people. We have our, the world led by some very nefarious people right now. Zimbabweans will start exchanging quadrillions of local dollars. You are a lifesaver. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Zimbabweans will start exchanging quadrillions of local dollars for a few U.S. dollars next week as President Muba uh, Robert Mugabe, who misspoke, uh, his government discards its virtually worthless national currency, the central bank said on Thursday. The southern African country started using foreign currencies like the U.S. dollar in South African Rand, it would be the Cougar Rand, actually. Shout out to Juta. In 2009, after the Zimb Zimbabwean dollar, why can't I say that? Zimbabwean. The Zimbabwean dollar was ruined by hyperinflation, which hit 500 billion percent in 2008. At the height of Zimbabwe's economic crisis in 08, they had to carry plastic bags bulging with banknotes to buy basic goods like bread and milk. Prices were rising at least twice a day. From Monday, customers who held Zimbabwean dollar accounts before 2009 can approach their banks to convert the Zimbabwean dollar balance into dollars. Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, that'd be the RBZ governor, John Manguda said in a statement. The point is, friends, I'm not saying America's going to go this route, but I'm saying what Ron Paul said. Bad monetary policy will destroy a country. And make no mistake about it, the central banks and Keynesian economics is, in fact, bad economic policy. You can get around this by buying gold, silver, platinum, anything like that. Try to stay out of the stock markets. Try and stay out of things that will um, likely depreciate due to bad monetary policy, which is exactly what we're seeing here. And again, it's happened before. How many of you know about the Weimar Republic? If not, look it up. It's, it's part of World War II history. I'm not making it up as I go here just to talk into a mic for the hell of it. Um, Infowars.com, another misspeak. 
Walmart's corporate spin can't defend shady food suppliers. Thankfully, and I, I don't shop there. I, many of you have heard many times about why and how I hate Walmart. I'm not going to go into it again. But I, I did praise them, and I continue to praise them for raising the, the, the price that they're paying people that are working there. Since their lack of payment and them being the largest employer in the U.S. has led to a huge spike in welfare. Um, again, I don't care if somebody needs welfare. I've never needed to be on it, thank God. Um, when I was growing up, my dad was a licensed practical nurse who unfortunately had degenerative disc disease. And throughout all of his 32 years of work before he retired, at one point his back went out so badly that he couldn't even walk. And for about eh, six months, nine months, we were getting assistance when he was basically learning how to walk again. Rest in peace, Dad. I miss you. Love you. Um, I have no problem with someone like that receiving welfare. I've never been on it. If I was to get fired tomorrow for God only knows what and couldn't get a job, you know what? I have no problem with unemployment, welfare. And it's fine. When you need it, life happens. I get it. I, I, I It's fine. But... Walmart was creating the kind of people who needed welfare. They were working full time and not making any money because of what Wally World was paying them, which of course makes your taxes go up. Well, I praise them for changing that and giving them a decent wage, at least uh, not, a, not what they call the living wage, but what I would call a livable wage. Very good to see. Well, now it looks like they were promising to do a number of things that they haven't done. And what, what's, what's misspoken about this is that they made it sound like they were really going to do so much stuff and they were going to help so many people. It says Walmart's public relations department attempts to distract the media with such petty concerns as uh, relaxing the worker dress code or increasing store temperatures by a degree due to complaints. There's links on the site. But a new report from Food Chain Workers Alliance, that would be the SCWA if you want to look it up, uncovers far more important problems than wardrobe. The report, Walmart at the Crossroads, the Environmental and Labor Impact of its Food Supply Chain, dives into the labor and environmental records of 22 of Walmart's suppliers of food items from chicken to bread to blueberries. The company has a history of broken promises, another link, but the disturbing findings of this report take the big box retailer's hypocrisy to a new level. According to Walmart's ethical sourcing standards, you can find a PDF here, all suppliers and their manufacturing facilities at a minimum must fully comply with all applicable national and or local laws and regulations. Yawn, including but not limited to related labor, immigration, health, and safety in the environment. What does that mean? The report finds that Walmart has failed to enforce supplier compliance with its code of ethics or labor practices, environmental sustainability, and local sourcing of food. Workers in Walmart stores and in its food supply chain endure a slew of labor abuses, including gender and racial discrimination, blah, 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 blah. Um, labor washing. Walmart has set the bar rather low for labor standards. Really, all labor must be voluntary. Slave, child, underage, forced, bonded, or indentured labor will not be tolerated. Suppliers shall not engage in support or trafficking in human beings. Yet the company has failed even at this. Last year, for instance, the large seafood supplier to Walmart was exposed for its ties to slave labor. Thailand-based seafood explorer Chlorian Popcorn Foods bought fish meal for its farmed shrimp from suppliers that own, operate, and buy from fishing boats manned by slaves. And again, who would want to eat fish out of the Asian waters after the Fukushima report I just gave you? It says, in addition, Rose Acre Farms, it's a major Walmart egg supplier, was sued in 2012 by the U.S. Department of Justice for discriminatory practices against newly hired U.S. citizens, requiring additional or different security documents from what is legally required. 
Um, they do not pay their employees a living wage, but at least they have announced some small increases increases in waging. Greenwashing, Walmart is also no stranger to sustainability hype that falls short of its results. Says the report details in 2005, Walmart's then CEO H. Lee Scott Jr. announced the company would be supplied 100% by renewable energy by 2015, and yet 16% is what we have. And again, I'm no big believer in global warming, but they're the ones who set this bar for themselves, made the promises, got all the hype, got all the free press, and then never actually delivered. Walmart's been cited for violations against the Clean Water Act, that does matter, and the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rotenside Act. These breaches are in sharp contrast to the corporate claims that they are environmentally friendly. So, I mean, it goes on and on and on. I'm not going to bore you to death with this article, but it's one of the major misspeaks that I wanted to get to here. And the last of the misspeak show, Hey, Rocky, Don is a whore. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get to cnsnews.com. Biden, most important thing Obama can do is going to handle on climate change. This, I really was thinking about giving the dunce cap of the month award to. And when I was putting the show together, I see now that I've accidentally clicked on the wrong one. Joe Biden is a very lucky man because he came dangerously close to getting a dunce cap mailed to him. Um, I'm going to get about halfway through this, and Christelle is probably going to be very upset that I accidentally called this show up right now because, or this article, I should say, because this might be the dumbest statement that anyone has made all year. This might be a candidate for dunce cap of the year around Christmas time. Our country is seeing racial division, riots, record unemployment, a dreadful economy based on uh, quantitative easing three now, or four, whatever we're up to. We are seeing problems in our food from Fukushima. We have problems from Russia, who has nuclear missiles now pointed at America. The Middle East is in flames. We narrowly missed an an Ebola outbreak. And the most important thing we have to worry about is global warming, which isn't happening. (laughs) This, I was at work. And it was all I could do to continue doing my job as I use and abuse my strippers. I could not pull myself away from the stupidity of this article. CNSNews.com Vice President Joe Biden said on Tuesday that climate change is the single most important thing that he and President Obama will address during their eight years in office. Of course, you know, the TPP has, you no know, none of the spying issues, none of the drones, not the Patriot Act, not the upcoming election, in which case you think he would be trying to get a Democrat in. No, no, global warming. This is the single most important thing that Barack Obama and Joe Biden can do in eight years of presidency and vice presidency is to actually get a handle on climate change, Biden said at the White House's Energy Summit. This is hilarious because you would think that Obamacare, I think it's a disaster, I know firsthand because I used to have great insurance. After Obamacare, I have really crappy insurance for more money. Um, <laughs> you would think they would claim Obamacare. It was, it was the golden calf, remember? No. Global warming. As CNSNews.com previously reported as a link in his State of the Union address in January 20th, 2015, Obama said no challenge, no challenge, poses a greater threat to future generations than climate change. He declared that at the State of the Union address that Tuesday night. What? They reported that Tuesday. At the summit, staged to announce $4 billion in private sector investment in clean energy research and development and detail executive actions taken by Obama 
to increase the federal government's role in investing and developing clean energy. Biden touted that role and importance of fighting climate change. <laughs> what we're doing, it really, really matters. <laughs> oh, God, I can't even read it in a straight voice. Let me try. What we are doing really, really matters, and I can't, I can't do it. And I want to tell you that you've got a partner in us, Biden said to a crowd of alternative energy advocates. We will do everything that's reasonably possible, and there is no pride of authorship here. We're doing things that aren't working. Keep in mind that for the last 10 years, there's been no proof whatsoever that the planet has warmed at all. In fact, they've been finding in the last 10 years that it's actually cooled by a few degrees. And yet the hype remains high, and the single most important thing is climate change. If you don't know why I'm laughing about this, I'm laughing about it, because it's tacked on to every gallon of gas you buy, it is, it's part of, you guys do know the UN Agenda 21. If not, do me a favor. Look up Agenda 21. Look up how it wants to control where you live, how you live, where you go, and how you get there. They want to compare nations that are the size of a postage stamp to a, why does America need so much uh, to travel around? You can see Singapore doesn't use that much energy. Yeah, never mind that Singapore is as big as a fingernail, and the United States is 3,000 miles long. And uh, on and on and on. They want to tax your fuel, all of this, and they use the lie that is global warming to get the money out of it and hope you're dumb enough to fall for it. And I really don't think most of you are. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. we got three more articles to get to. Nothing to do more with misspeaking. We have uh, covered the topic well. I do want to give a shout out to StickerJunkie.com. Sticker Junkie, as you can see here, made the Passing Time stickers. Band I'm in, Passing Time. If you want one, go to the correct views at Hotmail.com. I'll get you a Passing Time sticker. They were made by David Lake and Sticker Junkie. And uh, you can find David Lake at TheMediaSpeaks.com. If you order stickers, make sure you let them know that you heard about it from the correct views. And you're going to get a really great discount on your stickers. StickerJunkie.com I also want to give a shout out to Mike McLaughlin. He's a writer. He's a poet. He does political analysis. And he's somebody you're going to want to get to know. You're going to want to go ahead and buy some of his short stories. He writes vampire stories. For those of you that like to get away from all this political crap now and again. And just enjoy yourself. If you like horror, he's your man. Mike McLaughlin, L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Let him know you heard about it from the correct views. Hospitals are blatantly ripping us off. Michael Snyder, economic collapse. If you or anyone you've ever known and loved looks like they may be going into a hospital soon, every word of this needs to be paid attention to. Some of it, I promise you, will absolutely shock and literally floor you by what is going on every day. Sources for everyone that thinks I'm making it up. Most Americans are deathly afraid to go to the hospital these days, and it's because of the immense pain that it will cause to their wallets. If you want to get on a path that will lead you to bankruptcy, it happened to me, just start going to hospitals a lot. In America today, hospitals and doctors are blatantly ripping us off, and they aren't making any apologies for it. As you will read below, some hospitals mark up treatments by a thousand percent. In other instances, basic medical supplies are being billed out at hundreds of times what the cost provides. For example, it has been reported that some hospitals are charging up to $30 for a single aspirin. It could be difficult to argue that the extreme greed that we see in the medical system is even matched by the crooks on Wall Street, and we all know about the uh, too big to fail. These medical predators get their hands on us when we are at our most vulnerable because they know that at our lowest moments we are willing to pay just about anything to get better or to make the pain go away. They know that in our lowest moments we'll do that and then very quietly have us sign a bunch of forms 
without ever telling us how much it is actually going to cost. Eventually, when the bills come in the mail, it's too late to do anything about it. How would you feel if someone sold you something for 10 times the amount that it was worth? Would you feel ripped off? Well, that's, Michael Snyder writes, exactly what hospitals all over the country do every single day. Just check out what one brand new study has discovered, and there's a link to it in here. Some hospitals, according to the study, are making up treatments, are marking up treatments, excuse me, by as much as 1,000%, and new study finds and the average U.S. hospital charges uninsured patients more than three times what Medicare allows. That's right, if you can't afford insurance, you're going to have to pay three times as much. As not my opinion, I didn't know it until I read it. I'm just giving you commentary on it. You can argue that the uninsured are the ones that need hit the, the least, but they're making the uninsured pay for the Medicare because Medicare will only pay so much. 20 of the hospitals in the top 50 when it comes to marking up charges are in Florida. The researchers write in the Journal of Health Affairs. Why isn't that convenient? Since our elderly tend to retire to Florida. They are ripping off the most vulnerable among us. Do you understand what I'm, what I'm saying to you here? Three quarters of them are operated by two Tennessee based for profit hospitals. That would be community health systems and hospital corpor hospital hospital corporation of America. We just want to raise public awareness of the problem, said G Bay of Washington and Lee University in Virginia. An accounting professor who wrote the study along with Gerald Anderson and John Hopkins University in Baltimore. So again, if you're in Florida Avoid Community Health Systems and Hospital Corporation of America, or you're going to end up getting reamed. It says if that makes you angry, it should, and they are greedily taking advantage of all of us. Other studies come up with similar results, like this example. According to the National Nurses United, there's your source, the U.S. hospital charges continue to soar, with a handful of them, such as Meadowlands Hospital Center in Syracuse, New Jersey. Remember that, otherwise I'm yakking into the mic for no reason at all here. I'm letting you know, I'm giving you names here, I'm naming names on who's ripping you off. Hospital Medical Center in Syracuse, New Jersey. Going as far as charging more than 10 times the total cost, or almost $1,200 per $100 of cost of care. Sounds like a markup to me. How about you there, Sparky? Meanwhile, the 100 priciest hospitals in the nation were found to have this cost ratio begin at 765%, which is more than twice the national average of 331%. They also are charging for tests that they know the people do not even need. It goes on that it has been estimated that the amount of truly wasteful spending in the U.S. medical system comes to a grand total of 600 to 700 billion with a B annually. That's every year for you Kesha fans. That means that wasteful medical spending in the U.S. each year is greater than the GDP of Sweden. We rip people off more than a country has as a gross domestic product. Do you understand that? It says almost everyone has a story about an absolutely ridiculous medical bill. Well, how about this? The little girl who required three stitches over her left eye. The emergency room sent her parents a bill for $1,500. That equates to $500 per stitch. My neighbor recently spent six hours in the emergency room with bleeding from the mouth. He was on a blood thinner, needed several blood tests, and his heart was monitored. The hospital bill came to $22,000. A California man diagnosed with lung cancer chose to fight the cancer aggressively, which is his choice. It's what they tell you to do. Eleven months later, his widow received a bill exceeding $900,000. And I have a personal story about this. I know that it happens. One of the most disturbing trends that we are witnessing all over the nation is something called drive-by doctoring. 
That is where an extra doctor that isn't even necessary pops in to visit patients that are not his or assists with the surgery in order to stick the patient with a big fat extra bill. The New York Times has a piece about this, and this is from that article. Before the three-hour neck surgery for herniated discs in December, Peter Dreyer, 37, signed a pile of consent forms. The bank technology manager who had researched his insurance company, Mr. Dreyer, was prepared when the bills started arriving. 56 grand from Lenox Hill Hospital in Manhattan, $4,300 from the anesthesiologist, and 133000 from the orthopedist, who he knew would accept a fraction of the fee. He pretty much arranged it with him ahead of time. So he, he was very, very wise in the way he set up his procedures here. Still, he was blindsided by a bill of $117,000 for an assistant surgeon. A Queens-based neurosurgeon whom Mr. Dreyer did not recall ever even meeting, because he didn't. I can tell you that this does happen. My brother and I, when my dad was going in for his surgery, there was a doctor that said that he would be watching as the surgery was done. And again, my, my dad passed of liver and gallbladder cancer, so we really weren't paying much attention to the specifics, maybe as much as we should have been. I've gotten wiser. Um... The doctor that said he would be doing that, my brother and I went to the cafeteria, sitting there eating my uh, my, my fruit salad, sipping my uh, carcinogenic uh, coffee of Frappuccino. And what do you find? The doctor comes in and proceeds to tell my brother and I, oh, if I'm needed, they'll call me. He probably, he, I think I, my brother has the specifics. I want to say he, we paid him $60,000 to eat his lunch. It happens. It happens every day. And so it's not just happening in New York. It's happening all over the nation.